Hello everyone, it's DuckFairy07. Today we are playing Demir Frogtide, updated with Abhorrent Oculus card from Duskmoon. The best card from the set, which is just truly amazing card in modern right now, and probably in other formats too. Okay, so to uh, add Oculus to the list, I had to make some changes to the usual Demir build. Okay, so uh, unearthed, obviously this card becomes much much better with Oculus in the build. This allows you you a lot of power plays where you can just discard oculus to the frog unearth it on turn three or you can just uh, play consider or totscour on turn one then turn two try to uh, mill it over and unearth it again that happens uh, also uh, also having four consider four totscour often means that you can fetch play totscour fetch play consider and just have six cards in the yard to hard cast this guy on turn three. Uh, Merktide players have experience that playing Merktide on turn two, turn three is not that uh, uncommon, and uh, Oculus is truly like uh, very similar uh, like that. And you only need four, car uh, six cards in the yard, and they don't have to be instant sorcery. They can be anything. So lands are also good and okay so unearth is also very good in a deck because other targets that we have in this build are also pretty good unearth targets so we got orcish bowmasters we got psychic frog and unearth is just amazing with frog and it can be amazing with bowmasters when you're playing the ring decks so uh, when opponent plays the one ring what they will try to do is kill your bowmaster and then they will just you will play bowmaster in response uh, to the ring they will bolt it or something then draw cards and soon it will probably be over but not if you have like four honors in your deck then you untap honored bowmaster uh play a second bowmaster or honor the second bowmaster whatever there is just a high probability that you will be uh, able to uh make your bowmaster much larger threat with four unearths in the deck okay so uh, also just milling over a lot of cards with tots card consider uh, makes uh, gives you higher chance of actually finding the bowmaster uh, uh, as a target for unearth uh, when you have it in hand okay so that's it uh, also uh, thanks to the eight cantrips which all mill cards to the uh, graveyard and two uh, survey lands uh, which we have eight uh, fetches to find them uh, Obcurrent Oculus and Merktide Regions both can be played in this deck and uh, it often felt like uh, deck can support uh, both very easily and it's basically just like playing six Merktides in a deck but I believe at the moment that Oculus is better than Merktide. It's a big flyer, it's a 5-5. Five five. You will also often play Merktide as a 6-6 six six or 7-7. Seven seven. So it's a it's a, like one mana uh, ex more expensive Merktide, which also uh, does this manifest dread ability in uh, upkeep. In every upkeep, which means every turn you get more and more value from this. And not to mention that a couple of Manifest Dread abilities can turn out pretty bad for the opponent if only a single Manifested card is a creature like a Frog or another Oculus that can be super super strong. Okay, so uh, that's it. Uh, two Spell Snares, uh, four Pushes, uh, one Go for the Throat and two Sink into Stupors, two Force of Negations and... Uh, Others are creatures and lands. Okay, so on the sideboard I got three consign memory, three harbinger of the seas. Uh, these cards are great uh, against Eldrazi, but also they can beat a lot of matchups. Harbinger also consign is very versatile card. Stern scolding um, great against Yagmoth, uh, Merfolk sometimes and uh, boros it's definitely better than the four mana counter spell against a deck like uh, merfolk but uh, um, they do play caverns so it can be a double-edged sword putting that uh, in uh, but of course stern scolding great against the boros mardu energy which are two of the most played decks at the moment uh, great to have them uh, post board but uh, also i th think like two these two stern scoldings are primarily like a flex slots in the sideboard and they could be something else what you 
need more for your metagame. I really like the spell bombs, they are really relevant. I really like the split between one massacre, one toxic deluge. Uh, sometimes it can be hard to support two toxic, second toxic deluge. And sometimes you will draw them both and will need them both. Second go for the throat uh, on the side. This can be, of course, a shoot the sheriff. I prefer go for the throat, but kind of affinity is showing up again a little not a lot but uh, a little so um, it wasn't just uh, there until recently but uh, yeah should the sheriff go for the throat both decent options and uh, that's it okay so before we go to the gameplay i want to remind you of my dictionary profile uh, medium tires and guide tires are most used so in the medium tires i got three cyborg guides fully updated and will do another update in the in this month uh, also new article tips and tricks on energy zoo available in the guide tire um, uh, which is uh, 14 pages uh, 5 uh, 5300 uh, words on my thoughts about energy and zoo currently in the modern and uh, some approach to the most common matchups at the moment okay so also there will be more guides more guides in the near future uh, I, I probably expect to make a Dimir Oculus guide next uh, in the current month. Uh, and uh, that's it. Okay, so uh, I really, really enjoy playing this deck a lot. And uh, if I had like a tournament tomorrow, this is what I will go with. Uh, I think Oculus is major, major update for not only this archetype, but like multiple arch archetypes that can support it well. And um, obviously the Dimir Murktide, uh, Frogtide build is already very good even without Oculus. So um, I think this build is stronger, uh, but also uh, it's because deck can support both Regent and Oculus. And uh, I mean, it could be, uh, it, things could change if, uh, if players start adding huge amounts of graveyard hate, then uh, relying less on the graveyard it could be better but i still think in this build in the current meta game having a creature that provides such a value like oculus is a better option than just playing a murktide regent although it's uh, often mana cheaper and but this uh, this guy does so much and it can be unearthed which is a really really a big deal it's like a really huge deal and you can often mill it over with this uh, country spells so it works like a clock really good okay so um, let's go check out the gameplay uh, this league i played was a trophy league and it went very smooth very very dominating performance by the deck and you will see now okay so starting first in match one I have a uh, planning to play planning to play frog on turn two and surveil turn one put uh, consider in the yard find a fatal push play the verge also uh, if you didn't see this is a land from the new edition gloom lake verge great great land I think a really really uh, I'm really loving uh, the verge it feels great and I prefer it over something like uh, Dark Slick Shores, I think Verge is a better option. Okay, so uh, here I go, start attacking with uh, Frog, drawing cards. I have double counter spell uh, and Murktide, so uh, my opponent is still trying to find uh, a lot of affinity to play the big affinity spells, but they are now on one card in hand. And I have frog on the field plus double counter spell in hand. This is just a, such a great position for me. I don't need to hurt anything. Just continue attacking. I put two counters on the frog here, uh, find a land and yeah, here I find another frog. Uh, another frog opponent uh, actually has metal rebuke. I decide to let them uh, let them counter it and they are now on zero cards in hand so I just hold con counter spell for something more relevant here opponent plays frog tide I don't think that's like really um, important so I just let it happen let them attack me with a haste lifelink 
Next turn I play a uh, big Merktide and Merktide can block uh, Frogmite uh, very easily. Uh, it's 7-7 seven, seven, so I can attack one turn with just a frog. Get the damage through. Um, yeah, I, I had an option here to go for the Fatal Push but they had Welding Jar. So I decided just to get it flying, grow my Merktide a bit and just kill the Ornithopter. Next turn I can go again and my opponent concedes so that I'm very close to the lethal also for the next turn but my opponent concedes here so let's check out game 2 and also let's check out the sideboarding plan for this one. Okay so uh, go for the throat obviously goes out uh, so this is the only matchup in the modern where go for the throat is not good. Uh, otherwise really really great card, uh, important card especially in the mirror, also great in, against Boros obviously and all the creature decks. Um, but uh, as you can see here I boarded out a Force of Negations, I boarded out a Go for the Throats and Spell Snares. Spell Snares are pretty bad in here, I'm not sure if they even play like a single uh, 2 mana card in their deck and one Earth goes out. Uh, brought in some uh, sideboard cards. I think Stern Scolding is like pretty good in this matchup. It uh, does a lot. Okay, so here I save my frog. I think that uh, they only have one color mana uh, at this point. And Stern Scolding counters a lot of their uh, important spells. And I can, I can use three mana here. I had option to play Oculus or to play Regent. But since all my spells in the yard were instant and sorceries, I thought like it's probably better to um, use the instant sorceries to cast a Merktide and then uh, use non-instant sorcery cards to play uh, Oculus. And uh, here you can see me um, finding this uh, Toad Scar. So I can mill over two cards and... Uh, I can play the Oculus uh, and I decide to discard this frog to deal more damage this turn. Start hitting them with frog and making this a two, tur two turn like clock. And I go, for, uh, I go for Oculus here, discard six. You can see I already have so much cards in the graveyard next turn. I can even just hard cast the second Oculus. And this Oculus helps you uh, cast the second one. So, in each opponent uh, upkeep, you mill two cards and manifest one of those two. Okay, so here you can see me playing a second front frog, putting my opponent down on seven, putting another manifest token. So, going wide in this situation and start scolding their uh, thought monitor, seal the deal. But yeah, next turn, I already have six cards in the yard to play another Oculus. So it's just, it's often not a big deal supporting multiples uh, plus Merktide. So this game I casted one Merktide, one Oculus and then again I had uh, enough for a third one. Okay, so uh, that was match one. Let's check out match two. So concerning I don't have uh, basically any affinity hate. Uh, I, this played out pretty pretty well against affinity um, I don't have any spell that kills artifact in my deck and still it was fairly easy uh, also bowmasters is often like very good against affinity affinity struggled against uh, bowmasters in the past a lot okay so we can see here I'm holding the bowmasters Trying to see what is my opponent playing. If there, if this is a mirror, I kind of want to save the bowmaster. I'm not in a hurry to play it, so I want them to play their bowmaster, so I can then after that play my and kill theirs, of course. So I'm not in a hurry to do anything here. I just, I just surveil, uh, put Totscower on top. Totscower on the top allows me to uh, cast uh, either uh, like Murtide Regent this turn or just hold mana, try to go for the oculus next turn and if I don't succeed I can unearth oculus that seems like a great plan in this situation 
So I feel like now it's a good way to cast the Orcish Bowmaster. I want to make them use their spells now. If they don't, I'm resolving my Bowmaster, hitting them. So they choose to not uh, counter it, uh, which is good for me because I'm um, I'm hitting them for two and they are holding mana to deal with uh, other spells here i go for the frog and my opponent decides to just let the frog resolve because they have fatal push and they decided to save the counter spell opponent again shocks in they are now on 10 and i'm attacking with bowmaster so it's a pretty pretty decent situation and also my hand is just so full with everything so first I go for the attacks holding a fatal push in hand it seems like a great situation so I go now for the oculus I have a lot of spells in the yard which are not uh, artifacts enchantments I think feel it's a good good uh, um, to try to go for the oculus opponent has counters so I go for the unearth but they have another one I should have, prob should have probably exiled a frog from the yard since I would still uh, have Oculus in the yard if to unearth it if they... So I think, yeah, I should have uh, exiled the frog from the yard, leave another instant and sorcery. This would allow me to just uh, go unearth this turn and play Murtide region as a 7-7 which would make it bigger than their Murtide. So I will probably play it this turn but it didn't really matter since I was able to unearth the oculus, um, manifest card in their upkeep, put another instant sorcery in my graveyard to make my uh, Merktide very large. Next turn, opponent tries to dig uh, for removal for oculus, and but it's clear then in, in situation like this, if you're trying to raise and if we are just. Um, Passing the turns, uh, obviously Oculus is beating the Merktide since we are getting free creature every turn plus that creature can be another frog or another Oculus so it's really really strong. Okay, so let's go now check out the game too. And also let's check out the sideboarding plan in the mirror. Uh, okay, so we can see here that uh, I trimmed one unearth, one Oculus. Uh, both uh, force of negations to bring in uh, some graveyard hate to bring in another go for the throat go for the throat is great in this matchup really important piece again it's really important to just play uh, play, sl play slowly in this matchup uh, there is no hurry to uh, to go for the frog on turn two it's always better to just keep a spell snare and then try to uh, catch them uh, spell snaring their counter spell trying to counter your frog okay so i go for the swamp here i don't know if they left uh, harbinger post board so uh, they go for uh, i try to resolve psychic frog maybe hoping they would go for counter spell so i can use the spell snare they don't it's totally fine uh, i kept another unearth on top and i have two unearths i feel like this is great super good card in the mirrors uh, especially pre pre board in game one when uh, there is no graveyard hate post board pieces in but i definitely am for leaving uh, them in a uh, post board i just trimmed one okay so here i uh, I put a spell snare in the yard, grow my psychic frog, attack for two, put them down on 15, draw another oculus. Okay, so I have enough cards in the yard to try to resolve oculus. And uh, yeah, I decide to discard another land, keep some instant sorceries in the graveyard. And yeah, so here I go for it. Opponent has counter spell, I go for the spell snare. And they have another counter spell, but again, unearth wins this game. So after all of this counter battle, I unearth the Oculus, manifest red in their upkeep, and immediately I have four uh, uh, instant sources in my graveyard. So if I draw a Merktide next turn, I can immediately play it as a 7-7. Okay, so you can see here opponent... Uh, uh, 
uh, opponent going for Oculus and it's yeah it's an interesting uh, I gambled a bit here maybe it didn't uh, it maybe it wasn't a good gamble I think it was better to just play the Oculus and not attack with Frog uh, or I should have uh, I should have attacked with Frog but I forgot to give it flying and I think that was my intention I wanted to give frog flying and attack but I accidentally attacked without giving it flying and that allowed my opponent to double block my oculus with their oculus and the manifest token. So that was uh, that was a mistake on my side but this was an interesting kill so I manifested a bow master here and I, I uh, turned it up. Uh, when they played consider and kill them with I would have probably win anyway. But uh, yeah, this was cool because I uh, turned up the Bowmaster and I got the one damage uh, with their consider, uh, holding counter spell in hand, so that was game over. Okay, let's check out match three. Okay, so in the match three. Okay, so these games in the mirrors are games of patience uh, where you're just uh, waiting until you can gain mana advantage in a situation like what we saw uh, in the last game as uh, I just uh, holded until I had uh, I was able to triple spell in a turn because I have so much cheap spells and I was able to play play the creature uh, spell snare and unearth on the same turn and unearth on oculus won me that game very simple you can see here opponent doing a mistake uh, attacking with guide of souls into my bowmaster and then i go for a throw their ocelot they flage my bowmaster it's uh yeah and uh yeah here i play the oculus and i think this guy is a game changer against um against uh, 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 boros because they have to have exactly static prison to exile it if they don't have static prison uh, then uh, yeah often bolt uh, yeah bolt, bolt will won't definitely kill it and even galvanic discharge won't kill it that easily uh, in the beginning and as you can see here this this uh, deck is all about uh, kind of not uh, allowing your uh, resources to go wide and it's trying to contain the boros by um, countering the key spells okay so we can see here opponent uh, has a good hand they have flage in the yard they have ring in hand so pretty good for my opponent i am currently uh, in the top deck mode and i find oculus and yeah we can see here also oh, now opponent has the ring in hand they have flage in the yard so they have two strong spells they can play but uh yeah we can see here that uh, opponent didn't want to play uh didn't want to play this uh ring and then let me have the second oculus and uh, so two oculus on the field are uh, big problem even if you resolve the one ring so yeah that was that was definitely uh oculus was a big problem here for the opponent and i was able to get the second one and then i also got the third one and yeah, manifesting is such a powerful ability it's playing out much much better than you would think and we can see here in this blocker phase just how good was this manifest Okay, so my opponent uh, deals three damage to Oculus, so I don't want to uh, uh, don't want to block with this guy, and uh, they uh, they uh, stack their uh, damage, and uh, then I flipped my Oculus for three mana, so they were only able to kill one manifest token and they had to use another spell to kill my second oculus so yeah so now opponent still has a flea they have three flage actually and uh, i'm attacking for oculus for 10 damage and manifesting another creature with orcish bowmasters in my hand okay so uh opponent goes 
for the galvanic discharge kills oculus and they decide to not go for the flage this turn and i had uh, orcish bowmasters in my hand and uh, this allowed me to go for uh, the lethal immediately on the next turn before opponent can play the flage and stabilize so i got the kill there and yeah it was a pretty pretty cool game uh yeah where just Ocul i can't see any other cards uh, winning this matchup other than Oculus. If I had Merc Tides, uh, opponent uh, would not care as much about them and they would just uh, probably um, resolve, try to play a ring sooner, resolve the ring and I think Oculus was like the only only card that can win you the game in a situation like that one before it was just very strong and uh, yeah opponent feared it and they played they probably played even too much around it okay so uh, we can see here i had a bunch of stuff to play but i decided to go patiently and yeah i was expecting something like blood moon i really wanted to play around it as much as possible okay you can see here um i played uh Mertite. Uh, but I'm still holding uh, Fatal Push, uh, Unnerd, and they go very good turn, one ring plus Static Prison, and I think a lot of players would give up in this situation. So, opponent is on 17, they have the one ring, but uh, yeah, I have uh, only thing I have here is one Bowmasters, and they have probably a hand full of uh, removal and so it's bowmaster probably won't do its thing as you can see here i try to go for it i deal one damage but opponent has removal and yeah they deal with it immediately draw two more cards and even play the static prison to get rid of the psychic frog it's really hard to believe that um, this game is winnable so I go for a uh, Tots Cower and Unearths really shined in this game. They really really shined because uh, I was able to unearth two Bowmasters with the ring on the field. It makes it hard for them to use the one ring and they are taking uh, two damage in their upkeep. So I'm attacking for three here, opponent is on 11. In their upkeep they go down to nine. And uh, if they decide to tap the ring, they are actually taking um, they are taking six damage, which is very close to the kill next turn. Okay, so I had an option here to kill Giganta or kill God of Souls. I think it's a better option to uh, kill uh, God of Souls, even though I can't uh, attack with Orc Army token through Giganta but uh, yeah here i go for consider graveyard the land and play the spell snare and yeah here you can see my opponent struggling with static remaining uh, that uh, energy with uh, static prisons it's not easy to support so many static prisons against a deck like this that is trying to um, uh, that is trying to cut your resources and counter the most important cards a lot of cheap removal and efficient creatures okay so my uh, orc army is a 6-6 six, six. they play orc Ar uh, orim chants there i can't attack and they are gaining life uh, taking three in the upkeep uh, from the ring but yes yeah, still i'm playing so much they resolved the one ring uh, long long ago so it's like four or five turns ago they draw so much cards already with it but i'm still in the game i'm still in the game and yeah okay so they go for the flage here i decide to sink into stupor the flage uh they replay it from hand to gain some life which is enough for them to survive next turn but they're surviving on one life and actually have to jump this orc army token uh, i top deck another counter spell and so it's a uh, it's really important here to decide what are you going to counter obviously uh, 
it's it would be nice to counter flage but it's not really necessary since they're dying uh, even if they dissolve the flage but uh, the guide of souls I, I think that card is card definitely that will would bring them uh, into um, having enough uh, enough life to survive next turn so i decided immediately to counter guide of souls let them resolve flage and hold spell snare okay so my opponent my opponent actually had to shock in to play flage since they didn't have enough energy and that meant that uh, they are only on five life and uh, taking five uh, in the next upkeep from the wandering so i won this game too which maybe in some parts of the game seemed impossible to win uh, but uh, got there so let's go check out uh, match four i think it's really important uh, in situations like the last one to just decide uh, not give up when you're playing against Resolve One Ring. Just not give up. Uh, like count what are your odds of winning and what you need to do to win, and just follow that uh, game plan and uh, best you can. Okay, so here uh, you can see me. Uh, I wanted to cast the frog, but I changed my mind. I had a feeling like opponent is probably going to attack with apprentice and just killing, killing apprentice for free feels great. Uh, I'm holding, uh, yeah, really, I'm glad to get rid of this apprentice. I don't really mind it. I'm just glad to get rid of it. I don't mind if they bowmaster my bowmaster. That's completely fine. Okay, so they go for the frog. They go for the frog. I have, have multiple options here. I decide, I go for, I play my frog and discard Oculus and unearth Oculus immediately. This is such a strong play. Turn 3, uh, play frog, uh, bring back Oculus with uh, unearth is extremely, extremely strong. My opponent actually tries to do same thing. Yeah, they try to do same thing and yeah, I t yeah, this wasn't a great decision for me. I actually, I think I actually forgot they can use the spy master vault to try to add uh, one counter on the frog uh and yeah so i ended up discarding merktide which to save my frog which wasn't the best play i think uh, the better one would be just not attacking and playing merktide this turn uh, but yeah i had to save my frog since i went uh, down that road and now i was in a disadvantage but still attacking with the big frog so in okay position here i uh find sink into stupor and it's amazing uh, how relevant were this sink into stupors in uh, so much matches they brought a uh, big big advantage okay uh, so here again sinking sinking their uh, uh, frog which uh, the frog was a four or five so uh, bouncing it uh, felt definitely felt great opponent plays double frog here but uh, yeah my frog is bigger here and uh, it's a 5-6 actually, so this basically means uh, next turn I have a kill with the frog, so if they can't kill, my opponent realizes that, so they keep one frog back in defense. Uh, this, is, uh, this is good news for me because it means that uh, they will have to jump uh, my frog with their frog, that is great news for me. Uh, they have to give it i don't know why they give it flying it wasn't really necessary but never mind uh they jumped with frog and played the bow masters and yeah played double bow masters and put a spy masters vault ability and that was enough to for my opponent to find lethal next turn so that mistake costed me a lot put me in disadvantage and uh, um, made me uh, lose my first game in this match so basically the only game I lost so far was because of my own mistake which tells you just how uh, how strong this deck uh, uh, feels when you play it it's just um, 
especially the version with uh, I played a lot of Dimir Froctide even before the Oculus. I always felt like that uh, deck is great even then, but uh, now it's even better. It feels even better. So here I go for the frog. I go for the frog and this time uh, this time the change worked out better for me so we both used a frog ability several times to grow the frog uh, I discarded uh, more times opponent here was probably scared of me playing a Merktide or something like that so they um, they let decide to let their frog die not to discard more cards on it Okay, so here uh, I go for the attacks with the frog, this time they let it uh, deal damage and play the bowmasters. Um, yeah, they get another bowmaster ability, that is completely fine. I'm close to resolving Merktide or Oculus next turn, but my opponent has another timely uh, spell bomb, so uh, nothing happens. I get another uh, frog. I get another frog which which was good and uh, yeah so here uh, I put counter on my frog and play the meat hook massacre meat hook massacre kills all their creatures and I can attack with the frogs uh, draw two cards and they have zero in hand so that's basically reads a game over and yeah my opponent uh, concedes that one so let's check out uh, game three Let's see the sideboarding plan. Obviously, Nikhil spell bombs are very important in this matchup. They have to go in to find place. I trim one Tot Scour. That is a card I often trim. Uh, fourth Tot Scour. Fourth Unearth. Both Force of Negations and double counter spell in this matchup. So, because there are so many cards I have to fit in, especially uh, Nikhil spell bombs. I want a second removal, second go for the throw too. But uh, also, like Toxic Deluge and. Uh, Another mass removal, what is it called, they are also great in this matchup. And again, here I go, unearth the Oculus, such a strong play. So basically I unearth the Oculus and the opponent concedes. And I also have counter spell as a backup in hand, this is amazing. And yeah, my opponent concedes. It, the Oculus resolved and can be answered. It's just too much and not to mention that I manifested Dread again, another Oculus. This is disgusting. So if my opponent didn't concede now, I would untap uh, and like pay mana to flip this Oculus and they then they would definitely concede. It's just disgusting how good this manifest Dread ability often can be. And there's many good hits, like Frog is a great hit, hit Oculus is a great hit. In some matchups, Bowmasters can be very strong hit, so uh, there's that. Okay, so very fast, game 3, and let's check out the last match of this league for the trophy. I was playing against Living End. Uh, I think Living End is a pretty decent matchup for Dimir. I have a lot of counter spells, so 4 counter spells. Uh, two force of negations um, and the sink into stupors also work pretty decently against them and while also frog can discard uh, creature cards in the yard surprise them uh, you can see me uh, leaving another counter spell uh, on the top so i'm just holding my counter spells here playing slowly uh, so you have to remember this new versions play endurance and sometimes they also play uh, this uh, card I'm not sure forgot what is the name but it allows you to a uh, four mana uh, blue instant that allows you to cast um, living end as an instant and it, it also bounces I think bounces the permanent plus allows it to cast a sorcerer as an instant I sure, forgot the name, but uh, I know s most lists don't play that card, but some do. Okay, so you can see me here playing uh, the uh, Todd Scour. Had multiple options here. I decided to Fatal Push the Subtlety and pass the turn holding double counter spell here. Opponent goes for Endurance. And yeah, okay, so I go for the counter spell. Opponent uh, plays Force of Negation. 
and uh, yeah so i went for another counter spell i didn't want them to let uh, them touch my graveyard so my logic was even if they play uh, living end on their turn i have oculus in the yard and my oculus in the yard beats their whole yard so they can't attack with their creatures because my creature is bigger uh, and it's flyer bigger than the, and i get manifest uh, token each turn which blocks their end easily so there is uh, there is no point in them playing the living end that turn so that was the reason why i protected went uh, for the end protected my graveyard with double counter spell uh, countering that endurance i think that was the most important thing and it's pretty sweet how good is uh, sink into stupor in this matchup it's also it was also very relevant in other matchups i really like having two of those uh yeah and here it is another sink into stupor so when i, I was uh, going to play oculus here but when i draw another sink into stupor i decided to just hold both for their turn in case they have like mystical dispute so i go for the sink into stupor um and yeah so now i can just uh, attack with a uh, frog again give it flying to draw that card so i go give it flying and i have enough cards in the yard to play the oculus and still hold uh, another sink into stupor okay so here i draw um i have six mana that is all i need so i go for the oculus and uh, yeah i still i still hold uh, leave two creatures in the yard which i can uh, which is good against their living end of course so even if they're living end i still have oculus in the yard i have some chance so my opponent goes for another cascade and i have another sink and my opponent decides to concede because i have a uh, six damage uh, plus five flying next turn which is lethal my opponent realizes that and concedes so that is uh, game one let's check out game two and also let's check out the sideboarding plan for the living end obviously again nihil spell bones such an important card okay so you want to take care of uh, overboarding in this matchup which is maybe something i did and uh, yeah but you can see, my plan here was to just go full hate and then in the game three uh, bring back some fatal push because uh, i'm not sure if you know but uh, so often living end game plan in the games two and three is to just win by playing a fair game and that is even uh, more often a thing when um, uh, when uh, when they're playing uh, in games like this with nihil spell bombs on the field so uh, my opponent uh, here decides to just hard cast their four mana creatures and counting on that i removed a lot of my graveyard okay so i go for the throat their endurance uh, go in with continue attacking with bowmaster and uh, I should have a graveyard at this second force of negation. And that I think definitely that was the better choice. And here my opponent hard cast their first curator of the mysteries. Yeah, that uh, that is a problem. Uh, I mean, one curator is not a problem. But what happened next uh, I definitely was. So my opponent uh, attacks for four, which is fine. Uh, I can still counter attack them but um they play another one and if it wasn't another curator i would be able to block it or something like that but uh, in this situation i wasn't able to do much about it i draw counter spell now but i can't counter it so it's too late uh, I, I have to draw something so i go try to crack the spell bomb i dig with the consider finding a solution a very good solution and unfortunately my opponent finds mystical dispute and mystical dispute was key in this situation for my opponent to win this one 
Okay, so they go in uh, with both of their creatures, leaving me on four, which means I don't have any outs. I don't have any outs. I actually find the good cards here, but I only have one blocker and that is not enough. So my opponent wins this one. Let's check out game three. Okay, so multi six uh, keeping button fatal push and consign to memory and counter spell. You can see uh, in game three I boarded slide little differently, so I uh, brought in uh, two fatal pushes, and I, uh, they were out in a game two. But uh, I think cyborg was better in the game three. Um, also like i don't think like harbingers are the harbingers are not bad against them they can be useful but i decided i don't need them uh, on the play so uh, i decided to uh, put them uh, leave them in the in the sideboard so here i go for the frog i resolve the frog i have consigned memory if they try to cascade so a pretty good situation for me I also have Fatal Push if they try to go their uh, fairway. And uh, yeah, I definitely um, expecting them to try to play something like uh, Endurance. And here I go, shocking the Watery Grave, passing the turn, so like holding a Consign and Totskar. So but here my opponent goes for curator of mysteries i can't risk not drawing the fetch here so i decide to uh, just counter uh, the curator and go in for attacks with psychic frog draw another counter spell yeah here i uh, decide to let them uh, resolve the endurance and yeah i decide to let them uh, resolve it i have a good hand so I can just discard one card with frog, play the spell bomb. After I resolve the spell bomb, I play the bowmaster to kill their endurance. And I have spell bomb on the field, I have a consign. I don't have mana for counter spell, but this feels pretty good. So I can consign their cascade ability. And even if they dispute that, I still have a spell bomb. Sure, they would be killing my creatures in that situation, but that's like um, i guess that's something uh, i have to accept so here i go uh, for i discard oculus and go for the attack with everything leaving a counter spell in my hand so this way i put my opponent down on five put opponent down on five which means i have little on the board for the next turn with uh, counter spell backup and nihil spell bomb if they try to go for uh, if they try to go for the living end so here i find another spell bomb i crack one this way uh, i can give my frog flying okay so yeah i have to discard the card first uh, it was this was a bit risky but i discarded a card on the second frog since I have lethal if any of these creatures connect. Uh, so I was expecting them to have endurance here. Uh, so I went for the counter spell. I was hoping that probably it, but it wasn't. Uh, still, my opponent has to jump with both uh, endurance and shardless agent. And I do have a nihil spell bomb backup. Uh, luckily, my opponent doesn't have uh, another. Um, Another cascade spell, only the fairy, and but that is in, not enough to avoid dying next turn. So that is the match and the win uh, and the trophy league, entire trophy league with Dimir uh, Froculus or uh, I don't know what to call it at the moment. Uh, but yeah, definitely uh, Oculus and Frog were two most important pieces uh, in this build for this entire league. Uh, both oculus and the frog were amazing of course and uh, yes yeah, so the good deck in the very one of the greatest deck in the modern at the moment got even more powerful uh, oculus is a really strong card i really like the design i think it's a great addition uh, to modern 
uh, it went in value like crazy in the last few days went from like uh, 13 euros to almost 40 in just a few days uh, okay so um, not sure still what to think about meat hook massacre uh, i like the split i liked uh, this ability a massacre has uh, when a creature opponent dies you gain one life this is uh, comes in handy especially against a soul trader combo so every time they sack a grave crawler you gain one life so basically they can't kill you it's great against that deck and that deck is moderately played right now uh, online so uh, definitely there are people playing liking that uh, so Midhem Massacre works well there, uh, it acts as a mass removal against a small creatures, so it's great against Boros. You do have to pay, often pay like a 4 mana, but that's acceptable. As I already said before, I think Stern's Holdings are probably like uh, uh, the flex slots of the sideboard. Uh, all other cards are just really really good, I really like this 13. Uh, Stern Scoldings are also good, but they can be something else if you need. And okay, so I really like four unearths in game once. They feel like really powerful, really good. I often trim a fourth one in post board games, but uh, yeah, I really like it having game one four unearths. Feel great in this deck. There, there's just so much card flow and eight of these cantrips that putting uh, cards in the graveyard making unearth feel uh, much much stronger uh, okay so uh, that's it uh, but this deck plays uh, two force of negation four counter spell two sink into stupor in the main plus spell snare uh, this way it can uh, beat uh, uh, it can beat graveyard hate it can beat uh, anything uh, the ring decks and whatever I think it's pretty good uh, against most of the meta game and Oculus is such a strong addition it can get you out of situations the deck previously wasn't able to uh, get out it has another angle to win and that is all just very very strong okay so that is it for today hope you like the gameplay hope you like the video and uh, I, I think I, I'm going to uh, play this a lot more and try to make a cyber guide uh, in the next month uh, for this build i'm enjoying it very much it's uh, archetype uh, i really uh, always prefer playing uh, I, I have it entirely in the paper too so i think this will be my uh, main uh, one of my two main paper decks at the moment and uh, uh, online too brewing with i will be brewing with oculus a lot and together with Zoo, I think this will be two decks that I play the most. And Energy. Okay, yeah. Energy, definitely Energy, Zoo and Demir are my three favorites right now. And I'm working towards getting the, all of them in paper. And these three are the decks that I'm playing most um, online too. So uh, I'm definitely interested in making a cyber guide for this one already there are madu energy guides and domain zoo guides uh, on my dictionary you can find the link uh, down below in the video description uh, to all of that so that's it for today uh, friendly reminder to click like subscribe comment down in the video below tell me what do you think about oculus and what uh, did i forgot to put uh, here in the main in the sideboard what would you change always open to suggest suggestions a lot of good ideas come from suggestions from um, the viewers uh, so always looking forward to that and uh, that's it for today again thank you for watching and goodbye